All right, folks, gather around for a terrifying bedtime story. Once upon a time, in a land not so far away, there lived a little device called your smartphone. It seemed innocent enough, right? Wrong. That pocket-sized marvel is actually a potential spy in your pants. Welcome to the world of remote access where intelligence agencies can peek into your digital life like a nosy neighbor with x-ray glasses. It's like having a party in your house except the guest list includes the NSA, CIA, and probably that weird guy from high school who always knew too much about everyone. Remote access is exactly what it sounds like, the ability to access a device or system from a distance. It's like a digital skeleton key that can unlock your electronic life. Intelligence agencies have turned this into an art form, slipping into your devices undetected, rifling through your data like a raccoon in a dumpster. But why should you care? Well, imagine if someone could read your diary, listen to your conversations, and watch you through your camera, all without you knowing. It's not just about catching bad guys anymore, it's about potentially turning every citizen into an unwitting star of their own personal Truman Show. So, buckle up Buttercup, we're about to dive deep into the rabbit hole of digital surveillance. Now, you might be wondering how on earth do these agencies break into our devices? Well my friends, it's not like in the movies where a bespectacled hacker furiously types on a keyboard while shouting, I'm in! No, it's much sneakier than that. It's more like a digital cat burglar slipping in through the cracks you didn't even know existed. First up, we have what's called zero-day exploits. These are essentially undiscovered vulnerabilities in software that agencies can use to gain access. It's like finding out your house has a secret door that even you didn't know about, and the intelligence agencies have the only key. They keep these exploits under wraps, using them to silently infiltrate devices without alerting the software developers who could patch the hole. Then there's the good old-fashioned Trojan horse approach. Remember that Greek myth where soldiers hid inside a wooden horse to sneak into Troy? Well, intelligence agencies do the same thing, except instead of a horse, it's that totally legit-looking app you just downloaded. You think you're getting a fun new game, but surprise, you've just invited a digital spy into your phone. So, what exactly can these digital intruders access once they've breached your defenses? Short answer, pretty much everything. Long answer, absolutely everything, and probably a few things you didn't even know existed. Let's start with the obvious, your messages and emails. Every you up, text, every cringeworthy email to your ex, every group chat planning a surprise party, it's all fair game. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, my friends. Your photos? Yep, they can see those too, including that regrettable selfie phase you went through in 2013. Your browser history? Oh boy, they know exactly how many times you've googled, is it normal if my redacted? Spoiler alert, it probably is. But wait, there's more. They can access your microphone and camera too. That means they could potentially listen to your conversations or watch you through your own devices. And let's not forget about your location data. They can track your movements like you're a tagged animal in a nature documentary. Welcome to the future, folks. It's convenient, it's connected, and it's watching your every move. Now let's talk about the NSA, the National Security Agency. You know, that three-letter organization that's been treating the Fourth Amendment like it's written in invisible ink. They've got more surveillance tools than Batman has gadgets, and they're not afraid to use them. First up, we have PRISM. PRISM is a program that allows the NSA to collect data directly from tech giants like Google, Facebook, and Apple. It's like having a backstage pass to the entire internet. Every email, every chat, every embarrassing photo you thought you deleted, PRISM sees it all. Then there's X-Keyscore, which sounds like a rejected PlayStation accessory, but is actually a powerful search engine for NSA analysts. It allows them to search through vast databases of your online activity. Imagine Google. But instead of searching for cat videos, it's searching for every digital footprint you've ever left. But wait, there's more. Ever heard of Upstream? It's not a salmon tracking program, although it does involve a lot of fishing. For your data, that is. Upstream allows the NSA to intercept data as it travels through the physical backbone of the Internet. Section 5, Big Brother is watching known cases of agency surveillance. Now, you might be thinking, surely this is all just hypothetical, right? They wouldn't actually use these tools on regular people like me. Oh, you sweet summer child. Let me introduce you to a few real-world cases that'll make your hair stand on end faster than a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Remember Edward Snowden? 
No, not the guy who sparkles in the sun. That's a different Edward. Snowden was the NSA contractor who blew the whistle on mass surveillance programs in 2013. He revealed that the NSA was collecting phone records of millions of Americans who weren't suspected of any wrongdoing. Then there's the case of Muscular, a joint NSA-GCHQ program that intercepted data from Google and Yahoo data centers. They weren't just peeking through the keyhole, they were kicking down the door and rifling through the filing cabinets. And let's be honest, when you've managed to make Google a company that knows what you're going to search before you do feel violated, you know you've crossed a line, but it's not just the big tech companies. In 2015, it was revealed that the NSA had been spying on world leaders, including tapping German Chancellor Angela Merkel's phone. It's like reading your best friend's diary, except instead of finding out who they have a crush on, you're potentially compromising international relations. Section 6. Crossing the Line Legal and Ethical Implications Now, you might be wondering, is all of this even legal? Well my friends, welcome to the wild west of digital surveillance, where the law is about as clear as mud and ethics are treated like optional extras on a luxury car. Let's start with the Fourth Amendment, shall we? You know, that pesky little part of the Constitution that's supposed to protect us from unreasonable searches and seizures? Well, intelligence agencies have been treating it like a suggestion rather than a law. They argue that collecting metadata information about your communications, but not the content, isn't really a search. Then there's the FISA court, which is supposed to oversee surveillance activities. It's a secret court that hears secret arguments about secret programs and makes secret rulings. In fact, for the first 24 years of its existence, this court didn't reject a single warrant request. But it's not just about legality, it's about ethics too. Just because you can do something, doesn't mean you should. Mass surveillance raises serious questions about privacy, freedom of expression, and the balance of power between citizens and the state. Section 7. Privacy in Peril – The Impact on Personal Rights so, what does all this mean for you, the average Joe or Jane just trying to live your life without becoming an unwitting star in the government's version of The Truman Show? Well, buckle up, Buttercup, because the implications are about as comforting as a porcupine in a balloon factory. First off, there's the chilling effect on free speech. When you know you're being watched, you're less likely to express controversial opinions or engage in certain behaviors. Then there's the issue of data security. The more information that's collected, the more vulnerable we all become to breaches and leaks. But wait, there's more. Mass surveillance also erodes the presumption of innocence. When everyone is treated as a potential suspect, we move from innocent until proven guilty to guilty until proven innocent. And let's not forget about the potential for discrimination and profiling. When agencies have access to this much data, it becomes all too easy to target specific groups based on race, religion, or political beliefs. Section 8. From Smartphones to Smart Homes, The Expanding Surveillance Net Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, the surveillance net keeps expanding faster than your waistline after Thanksgiving dinner. It's not just your phone and computer anymore, folks. Welcome to the Internet of Things, where your toaster is plotting against you and your refrigerator is a double agent. Let's start with smart home devices. That innocent-looking Amazon Echo or Google Home. It's basically a wiretap you willingly put in your living room. It's like inviting a really nosy neighbor to live with you, except this neighbor has perfect recall and is sharing everything with Jeff Bezos or Sundar Pichai. Alexa, are you spying on me? I'm sorry, I don't understand that question. Then there's your smart TV. It's not just showing you programs anymore, it's watching you right back. Some models have cameras and microphones that can be accessed remotely, 